So, hi, this is Reverend Victoria Loveland Cohen at Unity Center of Peace, and I have the pleasure of talking with our guest, Kathy Cram Buell. Kathy Cram Buell, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, right. That's it. right. Uh, who is a trainer for the Racial Equity Institute, and she does a lot of work in the community, and we're going to find more about that today and also she's going to be doing a workshop for us called on becoming an ally responding positively to our times a very timely topic uh so today. okay so can you tell us a little bit about the racial equity institute what it does um how you got involved with but that it by degree is in african and african-american studies and I thought I knew everything. I had learned so much about the real history of our country and how we got where we were when it comes from the whole story, as opposed to only the story that was written by the victor. So I walked into my first workshop thinking, I know so much about this stuff. And I was, I was mind blown because they connected all these dots of all these historical things that I knew but had not put together in a racial analysis. And it's there, they, they have the people at the Racial Equity Institute come out of the traditions of the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond that's been around since the 19, between the 60s and 80s and on. So this work has been done over the country for many, many years, including decades. So, uh, you know, it, it, the Racial Equity Institute is just something that I do recommend people do. And I am, you know, I just want to give people a touch on, you know, like where one of the big things I'm called to do is to work with white people about racial equity and racism. And that comes from quite some long time ago. And I've been doing work with diversity and inclusion and things like that. But I really see the, the need to look at it in an equity point of view and to make sure that white people understand our place in it and like how how we didn't create it but how what we can do to work on it because we benefit from it okay okay yes and and can you kind of tell us what an ally what what is the definition of an ally we've been hearing this word a lot this since the beginning right. of the summer and um it seems to be a movement and so what is that, what is the definition and how can we be supportive of this movement? Well, LI has so many definitions. I mean, that's, that's another issue with racial equity is the language and knowing what things are called and what they mean. For the most part, an ally would be somebody who is working to help forward people who are being oppressed to try to do something about the oppression. And an ally is really someone who listens and takes instruction from the people who are, who are being affected. As white people, we think we're doing allyship work when we're trying to help people of color, help black people. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we don't ask them what it is we need to be doing. <laughs> And that is a huge, a huge piece of it because we have intention, which we, you know, we all have our good intentions, mm -hmm. but we don't always consider the full impact mm -hmm. of what we do. Right. So, so you're that, saying yeah. to, to listen and find out what the issues are, educate ourselves, and then from that point, like what, how can I be a service sort of? That right, saying? that sort of thing. How can I be by your side to help? How can I don't, a lot of people will say, you know, like an ally is somebody who's standing behind someone and, you know, supporting. But I think of it more on a side by side piece of thing. We are standing together to try to work toward equity. Mm -hmm. And so that means really deep listening to the communities that are affected by the inequities as opposed to always thinking that they need to be fixed in a way like, like I, they want to live like I want to live. That's not necessarily true. And we think, you know, in our good intentioned way that that's helpful. And many times it's actually more harmful. 
So being an ally, really a, a huge part of it. In fact, I'm allowed to do this work by the people. Uh, the Racial Equity Institute is uh, majority owned by black people. Mm -hmm. I take my instructions from black folks and they allow me to do this work because I will never understand what it's like to be a black person with the oppression they have. I'll never know as much as a three-year-old black child. Hmm. I just can't because I cannot, I can put, try to put myself in their shoes as much as possible, but that just, it's not possible for, for me to understand the depth. Mm -hmm. of what that is on a daily and hourly and every minute basis to have that oppression because it's generational and it's just we and, and a lot of times we perpetuate it without realizing we're perpetuating it so knowing where it came from and what it is is really helpful for us and able to to help enable us to move forward in a positive manner mm -hmm. doing what is needed as opposed to what we think we need to do. Right, so, so your role is uh, educating white people about uh, the uh, strategies for how to listen and how to really, really help rather right, than really be useful. Trying to be the white savior coming to, I'm gonna save you and fix it all for you. <laughs> right, and that's you know, it's something us white folks fall into a lot. Yeah, right. And at the Racial Equity Institute, we're teaching people, you know, across the spectrum, we're teaching white people, black people, Asians, um, people from every ethnicity. Right. Well, good. Uh, well, I'm so looking forward to this. The, and, I, and I know it's just a, a taste of, you know, what, you know, the full program is, but I think it's something that will really benefit us to, oh, yes. to begin to, to dive in and, uh, really learn about this, become aware, open our hearts, and see what we can do to right. help make a better world. And I'll make sure that to give you some resources to keep, you know, because okay. to me it's a daily practice. Right. And there are different, um, there's like a 21 day, you know, like a, a guide to different things you can do every day for 21 days to try to make it a habit. Okay. There are a lot of different uh, books. I'll give you some resources and let you know where people can look because we come from all different systems, healthcare, education, you name it. So there are, there are so many studies and so many scholars that have worked on this now that we have an abundance of information. We just have to really dedicate ourselves to, uh, to looking at it and figuring it out mm -hmm. and listening to our black friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you, Kathy. I really enjoyed yeah. this conversation and yeah. I'm so looking forward to the workshop. Me too. <laughs> and I love that it is on Martin Luther King Jr. weekend yeah. because, you know, Perfect, he's, right? his, I mean, his last act was working for the poor people. It was, it was not just a racial thing. And that's what got him in trouble, was trying to have cross race solidarity. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that was a problem mm -hmm. back in the day. So, yeah. and it still is today. So that's what we, if we can look at it and see it, we can do something about it. I am always hopeful. I have, you know, <laughs> I have faith and hope that, you know, we will move forward. Yeah, yeah we must. Yes, we and, and it's perfect. So it's Sunday, January 17th. 17th which mm -hmm. is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And we will uh, be joining in on via Zoom uh, at oh, one o'clock. Yes. <laughs>